two rather attractive solar lights from Timu. Probably available from other sources as well. But these came from Timu. And there's a little baby one and there's a big one. I didn't realise that when I bought them. One just seemed cheap and the other. So I bought the cheap one and the more expensive one thinking, what's the difference? Size is the difference. So let me show you what these look like if I turn the light off. Because they've got this sort of classic sort of filament bulb look inside them. So how is this going to look actually? Let's just see how it is for intensity. Not bad. That gives you a fairly good indication of what they're like. They are surprisingly bright. They look pretty much like a tungsten filament bulb in intensity. Uh, so watch your eyes. The light is coming back. And the lights extinguish in accordance. Now, there are three modes with these. It's got the first mode is the pass infrared detector mode that just basically turns it on at full intensity when it detects movement. The second mode is the one that has it at lower intensity, but then it uh, steps up to higher intensity when it detects movement. And the third mode, which is the one I think I had it on there, is a sort of mid-intensity and just runs, I was going to say all night, for as long as the charge in the battery holds out, which may be good, might be bad, uh, depending on where you are in the world. The solar panels, uh, there's not a huge difference in the size between them, but, but it's enough. Right, tell you what, let's open them up. Let's open the big one up. I am greedy for the big one. Let's find a suitable screwdriver and pop these screws out. Quite a large white plastic panel on the back. That is also effectively the reflector for the LED lamp. This is where a motorized screwdriver would be quite handy. I wonder if they've both got the same circuit board. I wonder what their charge circuitry is like. I guess we'll find out when we open it up. I shall take the circuit boards out and... Uh, we can look at both the circuit boards and see if they're the same. Right, this is promising. This is promising. I shall tap this. There's an 18650 with uh, direct solder connections on the end, which isn't generally great. The filament lamp. Oh, there we go. It's a circuit board. Uh, just sat. Is that going to unscrew? Because it is a. it looks like a standard... Uh, cover it is a standard cover that that would screw into a sort of E27 holder. That's intriguing. That's quite neat. Uh, I shall put that in so I don't break the filament. Oh no, it's not going in. I may break the filament. Right, tell you what, maybe I'll just just leave it off at the moment. The circuit board is down at the back here. There's a couple of screws holding that in with slots. It looks as though it's a universal circuit board. It's got like multiple slot positions for mounting things. And then we can take a look at this. What have we got? Is it going to be anything really obvious? I see a chip. I see a transistor. It doesn't have the usual arrangement of the... That's odd. It doesn't have the usual arrangement of the charge control chip. I wonder if that transistor there is switching the, the LEDs or if that is the charge control chip. Well, tell you what, I shall reverse engineer this, and I'll take the other one out as well, and then we can see what the circuitry's like. One moment, please. Well, this is new for the channel. It's a quadruple double whammy image. It's the front and back of two circuit boards at once, because they're very similar. Let's take a look. There is the super duper control chip, and I thought, oh, that looks fancy, because it seems to deal with the charge control, as well as control... Uh, monitoring the PIR. Now, I thought maybe it was a super dedicated chip that could deal with the low-level signals from the PIR, but I think it's a logic-level PIR, sending sort of a positive signal and it's doing all the filtering and timing itself. There's the transistor that switches the LEDs. Note that its base is being driven directly from one of the output pins, and there's the button that selects the modes. There's really not much to these. This version, the only difference is that it's got a slightly different pinout, but not complete different pin out and the fact that the two uh, solar panel input pins were the same I thought that this was a fancy dedicated microcontroller with charge control circuitry it turns out it might not be but the only difference here is they've put a 510 ohm resistor in series with the base of the transistor here right let's take a look at the schematic it's very straightforward and looks so nice and simple, but it's not nice and simple. Well, it's just not nice, actually, because it's doing something terrible. 
here is the zero volt rail. Here is the solar panel. And the solar panel goes to these special dedicated input charge pins of this mystery microcontroller, which may just be a cheap generic microcontroller with no charge control circuitry at all. And that then charges the lithium cell on the output, but also that happens to be connected to the standard pins that you'd expect microcontroller for the positive and negative. Um, there's a passer infrared. It's got the facility that uh, it can turn that off if needs be. So when you've set it to the off position on the button during shipping and stuff like that, it can actually turn power off to the passer infrared detector until you click that button to put it on. And then it turns the passer infrared detector on and then monitors the output. Um, there is the transistor, 1AM or Y1, driving the LED filaments. Only one of them has a resistor, and it is a 510 ohm resistor. Now, I did some tests. For a start, this big fat 18650 cell is only 500 milliamp power, which is miserable. The other cell is currently under test. I have a horrible feeling because I did some tests. I me measured the voltage across the lithium cell and then emulated the solar panel with my bench power supply. And the voltage went higher, and it went higher, and then it went above 4.3 volts. And I'm thinking, that's too high, and then it kept going higher. And then I took the cell out, and I put a capacitor in, and it just coincidentally looked like the protection diodes inside were the only charge control. And that's maybe why they're using two pins, because that uh, spreads a load across those two charge protection diodes. But whatever voltage this puts out, and in the case of the small panel, it puts out about 5.5 volts, uh, it's going to deduct about 0.6 volts, and you're going to get that charged up to about, say, 4.9 volts then on a bright sunny day, which isn't very good for a lithium cell. Very interesting. I don't think I've made any mistakes here. That really was it. It was a bit disturbing watching that voltage climb. Uh, that would also be used as the input detection then, conveniently, not just uh, charging via the protect pin protection diodes to the positive rail, but it would also monitor it for when it was dusk and the voltage across that uh, went down, and then it would switch into those automatic modes. So um, really what it needs, more than anything else, is the little protection circuit on the lithium cell. They don't have the little protection circuit on the lithium cell, which means that you, it's, a top, it's a delicate balance. If it was a big cell, if it was in use and you put it out in the sunshine and it, uh, this solar panel was not able to put out enough to top it fully up above 4.2 volts during the day, that would be okay-ish, but it's a gamble. And if you have a bright sunny day and given their low capacity cells, it will go well above 4.2 volts and it may cause the cell to explode inside the light fitting. Lovely. So don't put this anywhere flammable. That's not great, is it? I haven't tested how much current went through the LEDs. There's no current limiting resistor. Ultimately, the two improvements I'd make to these would be I'd add a current limiting resistor and I'd add the protection, a protected cell in there. You shouldn't really need to do that. But that's it, really. I mean, other than that, it looks quite nice. And the other nice thing is that people like you and me are going to be able to change the filament in these. It's a standard three volt filament if it ever fails, but your average punter isn't. And it will be driving these quite hard. I mean, the intensity was quite surprising, quite frankly. Um, meaning that it will typically, you know, if it gets any foot traffic, it will discharge that cell quite a lot. But if there's no foot traffic, it won't. And then the next day it will charge up to well above 4.2 volts. Yeah, it's it's horrible. I was so excited that I thought they'd actually made a dedicated chip just for solar garden lights. And it turns out it may just be a cheap order microcontroller and they've just taken shortcuts and ended up with a little bit of a dangerous product. But I could be wrong. I just feel I don't want to tar a product without... I mean, all the tests showed it was just overcharging the cell. But there we have it. I shall add the value of the other smaller lithium cell in the description down below, along with any other data that I add to this. But uh, I would say at this point in time, don't buy these. I, I certainly won't be using them myself. It just is not a particularly safe product. A very visually nice product. I mean, they've put so much work into it, but they've just then marred it by using cheap shortcuts on the circuit board. How strange.